In just a short period of time, the world's leading state sponsor of terror will be on the cusp of acquiring the world's most dangerous weapons. Therefore, I am announcing today that the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. We will not allow American cities to be threatened with destruction, and we will not allow a regime the chance death to America to gain access to the most deadly weapons on Earth. Today's action sends a critical message. The United States no longer makes empty threats. Instant reaction to President Trump's announcement in Iran, where President Hassan Rouhani came out near midnight to say he'll stick with the deal even without the U.S., but threatening what could happen if the now wounded agreement crumbles entirely. If Iranian benefits in the deal aren't provided, he said, Iran is ready to resume industrial nuclear activity. This is CNN Breaking News. We have breaking news uh, coming into CNN. The Israeli military says Iranian forces on the Syrian side of the Golan Heights fired rockets at uh, Israeli targets tonight. Israeli rockets and bombs rained down on Syria overnight. Syrian state TV broadcast images of the assault. Israel's target, Iranian infrastructure and military advisors in Syria, there to prop up President Bashar al-Assad. Israel says the assault was a counterattack after Iran fired some 20 rockets at Israeli military sites in the Golan Heights, causing no injuries. The confrontation between Iran and Israel now threatening to expand. Israel's defense minister warned Iran any aggression will be met with overwhelming force. If we get rain, they will get a flood, he said. And adding fuel to the fire, a political challenge from the United States. Today, the sign came down from the U.S. consulate in Jerusalem. It will officially become the American embassy on Monday. Palestinians who clashed with Israeli security forces today say the symbolic U.S. embassy move kills any hope of Israeli-Palestinian peace. Some 60 rockets were fired by Israeli jets at Iranian positions in Syria, with a further 10 missiles fired from the ground. It is the second such strike by Israel in as many days. Tel Aviv claims it was responding to 20 rockets launched by Iran from Syrian territory into the Golan Heights. The first rocket attack by the Israelis was launched right after Donald Trump announced his decision to withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal, which was reached back in 2015. In his latest statement, the US president blamed Iran for, quote, bedlam and death. We'll see how we do with Iran. Probably we won't do very well with them, but that's okay too. Uh, they've got to understand life, because I don't think they do understand life. If you look at what's happening in the Middle East with Syria, with Yemen, with all of the places they're involved, it's bedlam and death, and we can't allow that to happen. Defiance today in Iran, as the U.S. reimposed some sanctions after President Trump walked away from the nuclear deal, burning American flags after Friday prayers, shouting death to America and issuing a new threat that unspecified preparations have begun to restart Iran's nuclear program on an industrial scale if negotiators can't salvage the deal. It comes after a rare and dangerous military confrontation between Israel and Iran. And that isn't the only flashpoint. Jerusalem is now blanketed with posters thanking President Trump for his decision to move the U.S. Embassy to the city on Monday. A controversial decision that drove Palestinians onto the streets. Palestinians say they will keep protesting right until and even after the U.S. moves its embassy to Jerusalem and that they will never give up on their dream of having the holy city as their capital too. Nothing in the earth can stop us from demanding freedom or oblige us to surrender to injustice. But Israel so far has dismissed the protests as anger that will pass and says the embassy move will go forward no matter what. Richard Engel, NBC News, in the West Bank.
The Middle East on the verge of a wider war. David Makovsky is a former journalist and is now the director of the Project on the Middle East Peace Process at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. He's in Tel Aviv tonight. And Mark Perry is a contributing editor to the American Conservative Magazine. He's the author of Talking to Terrorists, Why America Must Engage with Its Enemies. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here tonight. Mark, let me start with you. We heard in the tape piece just before this, uh, the Israelis are preventing this, presenting this as a defensive measure. They, uh, the prime minister says Iran crossed the <coughs> red line by establishing military infrastructure in Syria. Is that the way you see it? Uh, not really. I think that this is a dangerous escalation. We had 27, Israel had 27 F-16s in the air over Syria hitting Iranian military targets. Uh, Mr. Netanyahu says it was a red line, but the Iranians have been in Syria for a long, long time and have had a relationship here. This is a dangerous escalation. It's hard to know where it will end. It's been quiet today, but there's no promise that it's going to remain quiet into, into tomorrow. I think uh, Mr. Netanyahu owes the world an explanation of what he's doing and where it will lead. On December 6th, President Trump's words shook the world. He recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and whether he knows it or not, fulfilled his part in a frightening biblical prophecy. Because according to the final chapters of the Bible, our country and every American citizen are about to face its greatest tribulation. Only the church leaders know the true meaning of this biblical prophecy that is encrypted in the writings of four ancient prophets inspired to send a warning across the centuries to all true Christians and patriots. Therefore, before watching this documentary, be forewarned. You are about to see how all the world's leaders and their armies are silently playing their part in the lead up to the greatest and darkest event in human history, an event that may leave 290 million Americans dead in its wake. Once you witness the chilling evidence of the words of our Lord coming true, there is no turning back. It will simply be impossible for you to go about your daily life like you used to before knowing the truth. But take comfort, for it is God's will that you are here now so that you may have the time to prepare and maybe grant you salvation from all the wickedness of our times. And if you're feeling skeptical right now, let me ask you one question. Who would have thought 70 years ago that the Jewish people would have a country to call their own? Only those who read Ezekiel chapter 37. That is what the prophet wrote 2,700 years ago. The hand of the Lord was on me and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Then he said to me, these bones are the people of Israel, my people. I will take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from all around and bring them back into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. Word by word, the prophecy made by Ezekiel came true. In 1947, the nation of Israel was born after the horror of the Holocaust symbolized by the Valley of Bones. Scattered for more than 2,000 years, the Jewish people come from all over the world into this new state and made it an economic and military power. Yet, it was not whole. Israel needed Jerusalem to become its rightful capital again, and that only happened with the support of President Trump. However, to the north of Israel, other biblical prophecies have come true. The prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah write about this Syrian civil war. This is what the prophet Isaiah says, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. And these are the words of Jeremiah. Damascus has become feeble. She has turned to flee and panic has gripped her. Anguish and pain have seized her. 
Surely her young men will fall in the streets. For 5,000 years, the capital city of Syria stood as one of the oldest and most prosperous cities in the world. But the civil war began in 2011 and turned it into a ruin. Not only do the prophets talk about the war, but also the refugee crisis and the deaths of its men fighting for one side or the other. The army of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad has been fighting the rebels backed by the United States, Israel, Turkey, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, and ISIS terrorists. In 2015, Bashar al-Assad was at the brink of total defeat. Yet exactly at that time, another biblical prophecy was fulfilled. Ezekiel 38 tells of Russia coming to the border of Israel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your army. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. One only has to look at the map of the world as it was known at the time of the prophet to understand. To the north of the Caspian Sea, we find the people known as Magog, inhabiting the land known as Rosh. Over time, the ancient name of Rosh became current-day Russia. Twice, Ezekiel says that Magog will bring his armies from the extreme north to the border of Israel. None other than President Ronald Reagan, a devout Christian, said many times he truly believed Russia to be Magog according to Ezekiel. What about the word Gog? Bible scholars agree that the word Gog is not an actual name, but a title. He is the ruler of the land of Magog, like a king or a czar. Ezekiel clearly says that Russia will come to the mountains of Israel in the latter years. This happened in September 2015 and never before. For the first time in history, the Russian army, navy, and air force became involved in a war in the Middle East. According to Ezekiel, Magog's armies has several allies, Persia, Kush, and Gomer and Togarma. Iran has been known as Persia for much of its history during the time of the prophets and beyond. Right now, Iranian troops are on the ground in Syria, fighting side by side with the Russians and the forces loyal to the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Put and Kush are the ancient names of Libya and Egypt. Egypt and Libya both suffered civil wars, and the new leadership is very friendly to the Russians. But the greatest surprise is the land known to Ezekiel as Gomer and Togarma. The historian Flavius Josephus references Togarma and Gomer as the people that lived on the territory of present-day Turkey. In fact, Turkish history books identify these tribes as living on their land at the time of the prophets. Three years ago, Turkey was a strong NATO ally, but everything changed after the failed coup attempt in 2016. Now, Turkey has become increasingly hostile to NATO and the United States. It forced NATO to remove forces from its bases. It's buying weapons from Russia. It fully condemned the idea of Jerusalem becoming the capital of Israel. And in fact, right now, the Turkish army is in Syria, fighting to defeat the enemies of the Syrian dictator. The End Times Alliance, prophesied in the first verses of Ezekiel chapter 38, has already been formed. Never in the history of mankind has there been an alliance between Russia, Iran, and Turkey. Now, one final prophecy needs to be fulfilled before the start of World War III. We saw how Jeremiah predicted the destruction of Damascus in chapter 49, but there is one more thing he wrote about that has not happened yet. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad is not an actual person, but a title. Just do one simple search online, and you will discover that Ben-Hadad is the ruler of Aram Damascus. While it is clear that Bashar al-Assad is the current ruler of Damascus, Aram is a region in Syria now known as Aleppo. The city of Aleppo was just recently recaptured by the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad with the help of Iran and Russia. 
And Jeremiah says that soon his palace will be burning. How does this happen? Look no further than the headlines of recent months, and you see time and time again Israel calling for the assassination of the Syrian dictator. Isaiah also writes about the end of Syria's dictator. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. This is the spark that ignites World War III. Ezekiel chapter 38 states that two-thirds of Israel will be destroyed in this coming war, and those left in the Holy Lands will face grief and pain and hardship. So what happens to the United States? Will we not help Israel at its darkest hour? To answer this question, we must first find the United States in biblical prophecy. John the Apostle in the book of Revelation and Jeremiah and Isaiah talk about another end times nation in their writings. A nation called Babylon or Mystery Babylon. The name is deeply symbolic. Ancient Babylon was a city made great by people who came from all parts of the ancient world, just like immigrants helped make the United States the world's only superpower. And because the prophets didn't know of the existence of the North American continent at the time of the visions, they called it Mystery Babylon. Some say Biblical Babylon refers to ancient Iraq. But if that is true, why do the prophets see it as a nation surrounded by waters? O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth, while Biblical Babylon has plentiful access to waters rich in resources, most of Iraq is a desert and has only a narrow stretch of coastline. Why do the prophets talk about pollution when in ancient Iraq there could be no such thing? Thou hast destroyed thy land. I have polluted mine inheritance and have given them into thine hand. Babylon mounts up to heaven and ascends above the heights of the clouds. These metaphors clearly reference a nation that has discovered flight it is obvious that Babylon or Mystery Babylon can't be ancient Iraq. But the prophets have more to say about this end times nation. Babylon is hailed as a queen among nations, the lady of kingdoms. According to the prophets, Babylon reigneth over the kings of the earth. It is the praise of the entire earth and an astonishment among the nations. It is a place of great riches and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. In fact, the prophets say clearly that should something happen to Babylon, all worldwide trade would stop. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. It is the number one military power and it's called the hammer of the whole earth. Isaiah in verse 18 chapter 2 talks about how Babylon's beginning would be unique and awe-inspiring. America was created out of the former British colonies, a nation made out of many states just like the prophets foretold. Our ancestors were the first British colonists and we speak their language. That's the reason why Jeremiah sees England like a mother to the US, according to verse 50 chapter 12. More so, the prophets talk about the lion that is on the sigil of the mother of Babylon. England uses the lion as its royal symbol. The last crew the prophets left us is incredibly accurate. The scripture often refers to Babylon as a woman. According to the book of Revelations, she sits atop water and has a golden cup in her right hand and a crown of seven rays on her head. And the woman which thou sawest in that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The United Nations, in theory, reigns over all the kings of the earth, and is situated in New York, the great city where you can see the Statue of Liberty. The statue is the most well-known landmark in the U.S., and the symbol of Babylon the prophets are referring to in their clues. So why then are they also calling it the Whore of Babylon? The sculptor of the Statue of Liberty was Auguste Bertoldi, a mason belonging to the Great Masonic Lodge in Paris. Before beginning the Statue of Liberty project, Bertoldi was seeking commission to construct a giant statue of the goddess Ishtar. 
The Romans also adopted this fertility goddess, but they changed the name to Libertas in Latin, Liberty in English. Libertas is the mythological equivalent of Ishtar. Therefore, the Statue of Liberty is in fact a statue of Ishtar, the Babylonian goddess of fertility, love, and sex. According to the ancient Babylonian rituals, one could only be purified of sin after intercourse with a temple priest or priestess of Ishtar. In return for this salvation, a gift offering was needed. Ishtar was the patron mother of the temple priestesses and priests. She was the mother of what we would call today prostitution. This is why Ishtar was seen by early Christians as the whore of Babylon. And that is why the Statue of Liberty, the symbol of America, is also called by the prophets, the Whore of Babylon. Do you think it is just a coincidence that the U.S., the home of the greatest and most famous statue of Ishtar, provides 65% of pornographic movies and adult entertainment to the world? Is it just another coincidence that this is the country where sexual liberation originated and spread to the rest of the world? It's not. It's just like the scriptures foretold. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The U.S. today has the most powerful economy and military, controls worldwide commerce, is proud and arrogant, has the most developed air force and space program, and it is the envy of the world. It houses the whore of Babylon. It reigns over the kings of the earth. And unfortunately for every living American, it is Mystery Babylon. This is what the prophets say about the great enemy of Babylon. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Remember which country the prophet said was from the north? The same country that Ezekiel said will lead a great alliance of nations to the borders of Israel? If war happens, the United States must be the first target. That is why the prophets foretell that at the start of this war, Russia will unexpectedly use a very special weapon, the weapon of indignation, against the whole territory of the U.S., a weapon like which the world has never seen. The holy book shows how Babylon will feel the fury of this terrible weapon. This weapon will hit our entire country and all our defenses will be in vain. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet the spoilers come unto her. This weapon paralyzes our military and leaves it almost defenseless. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. Their might hath failed. The broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. Because the spoiler is come upon her, even upon Babylon. And her mighty men are taken. Every one of their bows is broken. And after the attack, Babylon is left silent and in darkness. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. All three prophets tell of the fall of Babylon, the destruction of the United States of America as we know it. This is not an event that happened to ancient Babylon in the past. History has never recorded the fall of a state or a city in the way described by the prophets. What weapon could silence an entire continent in one hour? The world has never seen one until a few years ago with the creation of the Electromagnetic Pulse, or EMP. Over and over, think tanks like the EMP Commission, working for the Senate, have warned how this is the greatest and perhaps only real vulnerability of the United States. Yet no administration has done anything about it. We are completely unprepared for what's coming. Every report says the same thing. This event can wipe out 90% of Americans and all it takes is just one warhead to be detonated above the United States to take us back to medieval times. 
the lasting effects will destroy society as we know it, exactly as the scriptures predicted. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. Without hospitals or pharmacies being able to function, people won't be able to take their necessary medication. Without running water, heat and garbage disposal, diseases will break out. As cars and trucks stop running, market shelves will become empty. Desperate people will become looters and there will be food riots. There will be no police, no law, no health care, no help. It will all descend into chaos and confusion. A complete collapse of everything we take for granted today. As the prophet Jeremiah says, And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind it to a stone, and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that it will bring upon her. And this is the start of the time of tribulation and sorrows. For then shall be a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And yet, the prophet shows that there is still hope. But the ones who endures to the end will be saved. The message couldn't be any clearer. The warnings are there so that only the ones who believe the words and warnings of our Lord and prepare will be saved. My name is Alexander Kane. I am a theology professor working at one of the largest universities in Arkansas. I earned a doctor's degree in theology and ancient history, and for the past 19 years I have studied the ancient scriptures. And as I saw this prophecy come true, I knew I had to do everything in my power to protect the ones I love, and the obvious place to look for answers is in what people did 200 years ago to survive and thrive without electricity. The knowledge, methods, and skills of our ancestors will keep us alive after the EMP. I have discovered ways to keep food from spoiling without a fridge, and the secret to storing heat-sensitive medicine, and surprising places where you can find drinkable water enough to sustain your family for months, even if you live in a barren region. I learned how anyone, and this includes seniors and kids, can survive without electricity. The only one condition is that they need to know what to do when the power goes out and have preparations in place. I knew that I had discovered the true solution to the coming biblical disaster. I set to work on writing down everything I had learned. And when I was all done, I realized everything I had learned added up to a comprehensive guide to surviving and thriving during the coming EMP-generated Dark Ages. Every word written in the knowledge that what's coming is worse than Katrina, Sandy, or any other natural disaster. The fall of Babylon America will be man-made and countrywide, and there will be no place to hide. But faith knowing what to do, and preparing for what's coming are the only things that will get you through the fall of Babylon America. That is why I have named my work Alive After the Fall. Everything inside is specifically designed to get you through the immediate effects of the weapon of indignation. This is like a Noah's Ark packed with knowledge for the coming disaster. Let me show you exactly what I mean. It's just a seemingly normal evening and you are probably home watching TV when suddenly all the lights and electronics go out. Without any warning and without any explanation, the utilities are out. There are no more lights. There is no running water or gas for your oven. Your phone doesn't work. You look out the window and see that everywhere you look, it's the same. Darkness and silence. You knew that this was coming. You know what has happened. And you know you are ready because you discovered and put into place a step-by-step -step plan to prepare for when the EMP strikes. That is what Alive After the Fall is all about. You know exactly how to find and cook food without using any power and the hidden tricks to prevent your food and medicine from spoiling. While everybody else is looking helpless, waiting and hoping for the power to come back on, 
you are already using the simple and surprising methods you discovered to preserve your essential supplies from spoiling. You and your loved ones will not be among those scavenging for scraps. You head to the local store fast and hoard the seven must-have medicine supplies that you can use to keep away 84% of the diseases that will run rampant after the fall of Babylon. Now it's time to stock up fast before the stores are looted and you will be there before the lawlessness starts. This stockpile will be worth more than gold after the EMP. You'll feel safer knowing you have protected essential electronics like flashlights from the EMP using a Faraday cage. This simple device will shield your electronics from the EMP. This device is sold on the black market for $600, but I will show you how to assemble one by using common parts that you have in your house in just under 23 minutes. By going through Alive After the Fall, you already discovered the five vital electronics that are crucial to have after the EMP strike, and they are all safe inside the Faraday cage. There will be other survivalists and preppers out there, and restoring some basic communication and lighting are the first steps towards rebuilding a society. You feel privileged knowing that you took all the steps. Your car still runs after the EMP, even though the pulse fries car engine circuits. Having transportation is a daily necessity right now and a vital part of surviving when society breaks down. You will also need to know exactly how to make sure you and your loved ones stay calm and are prepared for the mental stress of such a calamity. And that's why when you get access to Alive After the Fall, you will also receive the survivalist mindset, keeping calm and assertive after the fall. You should know that the human mind is the most powerful weapon in any disaster situation, and this knowledge will make you sharp, aware, and focused, even when others are falling apart mentally. This guide is dedicated to showing you all the secrets to overcome the powerful emotions that can overcome even the most seasoned survivalist during a disaster. In Chapter 1, you will discover the simple blueprint to coping with the emotional stress that can ruin even the most carefully put-together survival plan. Anticipate, identify, and manage. You will learn the simple remedies for the most crippling emotional states, isolation, anxiety, and hopelessness, and many, many others. This knowledge will keep you and every member of your group confident, disciplined, and steadfast and will maximize your chances of survival. How to keep morale up and how to maintain a positive attitude. Using this information, you will become a true leader of the community. Keep in mind that many have lost their lives because they succumb to emotional stress first and having this tool will make sure you are not among them. The final thing you need to know immediately after the fall is how to keep basic hygiene and sanitary conditions. It's called Secret to Sanitization After the Fall. And this is what the final part of the Alive After the Fall package is designed to show you. How to be safe from diseases by using survival techniques to dispose of potentially harmful waste and garbage. The horrifying truth is that bacteria and microbes that can generate disease are responsible for 65% of deaths after a disaster. And you will have the knowledge to keep them all away. How to efficiently use limited hygiene supplies to maximize their effectiveness. You will take comfort knowing that you will make the most of the limited supplies you have and that they will last two to three times more by using simple tricks. You will also discover how to prioritize hygiene needs during a disaster. Valuable resources must always be kept on high priority sanitization needs and not squandered on petty ones. All of the information above is designed to take you through all the immediate effects of an EMP and to help you put together the best survival plan of this biblical disaster. When you get Alive After the Fall, you will also get access to the Alive After the Fall members area where you can check out the products, download and print them. I definitely advise you to keep multiple hard copies around. When the power goes out, all of this information has to be easily accessible. It took me 16 months to develop this state-of-the-art guide to surviving the EMP. This is hands-on, hard-earned experience and knowledge from those who discovered how to live a happy and even comfortable life without electricity. 
you will discover how to put together an EMP survival plan for your family, how to keep a cool head when society collapses around you, and how to be safe, clean, and keep diseases away. This is the vital and essential knowledge for the most dangerous and desperate times in American history. And it is the most important investment you will ever make because of one very important thing that you may have already realized. Money will become useless when Babylon America falls. Its value will become zero because people will need other stuff to survive. Knowledge, skills, and supplies will be the currency of the post-DMP world. These will be worth more than gold. That is why each dollar I receive from my guide will be used for something much more important. It is needed to keep my presentation online in order to get this crucial information to those people who need it and to those who are willing to take their fate into their own hands. Just like you, other American patriots and Christians need a chance to survive the coming disaster. And that is why the Alive After the Fall guide is now available for only $37. I don't know if you've noticed, but nothing just falls from the sky. God helps you, but He does not lay it on your table. You have to work hard and do things for yourself. As long as you are aware of this, your destiny rests solely on you and your willpower. You can truly change things, and you can do a lot more than you think you can. In order to take full advantage of this and to help me spread the knowledge, you need only to click Get Instant Access and fill in the required information on the next page. We must keep this website running, warn others, and get them to prepare. And your contribution may save lives. And Alive After the Fall is not just EMP protection. It's also about how you can cope with a food shortage, a massive pandemic, a natural disaster, or any other type of emergency situations. Expert preppers would charge you $250 at least for the knowledge contained in these bonuses and books available will be at least $100, but you are getting them absolutely free when you click on the Get Instant Access button. And you will also enter the Alive After the Fall online community where you get updates on the latest survival techniques, methods, and news you won't hear about anywhere else. There is a possibility that you are the last person that sees my documentary. Regardless, my mission stays the same. It is my duty to let people know of what's coming and to make sure they are prepared. And because I want to make sure everybody that made this contribution is completely happy with it, on top of all of this, I'm taking away all the risk from you because you are covered by my no questions asked money back guarantee during a 60 day period. All I ask is that you go through the guides, discover the information, see if you find it helpful and send me any questions or any kind of advice. And I am doing this because I am confident my work can save your life. You now know the dark secret hidden in the last chapters of the holy book. And I have already shown you just how close to fulfilling this ancient prophecy we are. Throughout history, all those who have not listened to the words of the Bible prophets have suffered immensely. You should really ask yourself, who will you turn to when this prophecy comes true? And your answer should be, I am confident I can rely on everything I know to get me through, even when the lights in the United States go out forever. Make no mistake. There's no help coming. You have to rely on your knowledge and skills. They will be your secret weapon when our society will shatter into a million pieces. And you will be the only one with a clear head and a well thought out plan. You will become a true leader for your community. You will be a shining beacon while others surrender to panic and confusion. There are only three possible options. Option one. You can do nothing, ignore the signs, or just hope all of this will not come to pass. But you were shown how this prophecy is coming true step by step. We are getting closer and closer to the fall of Babylon America. The greatest and darkest event in human history is coming. So after seeing all the signs, is this a chance any real Christian can take? Can you truly think of yourself as a diligent husband or father and pass on an opportunity to keep your family safe? 
Doing nothing means taking on all the risks, exposing yourself and your loved ones to famine, violent rioters, disease, and God knows what else. When the EMP hits, those who knew but did nothing will have to deal with all of the consequences of this disaster and the guilt of knowing they could have been ready but chose to ignore the signs. You did not come here by accident. You are presented with the option to save yourself and those you care about. You have only one true solution in hand, and you can take it 100% risk-free. Also, I mentioned earlier someone is trying their best to shut us down. It might not be long before they succeed. Option 2 means trying to prepare and to learn everything by yourself. For me, it meant going through months of research and painful planning. But time is something you don't have right now. Option 3 means getting the Alive After the Fall program right now. A risk-free, worry-free, all research done for you plan. If you care about your safety, if you really want your family to be secure and are willing to do what it takes to do that, this is the option for you. Click the Get Instant Access button right now.